G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Friday afternoon here in Australia, market down ever so slightly, but 2.61 trillion. I mean, you know, things are still moving quite fast. Now, Bitcoin has had a bit of a retracement and we'll have a look at that shortly. I think it got up to nearly $67,000. So we've had a $5,000 retracement, but look at pumped almost the same so it was a a bit of a pump and dump over sort of two days almost very very interesting but look btc dominance is starting to drop again still 45 percent we'll have to wait and see whether this is just you know an anomaly no not so much an anomaly but just a bit of a pullback uh because it pumped so hard and now it's the altcoin's turn so we could still see Bitcoin dominance rise, but it goes to 47% one day, down to 45, up to 48, down to 46, and so on and so on. Now, is that how it's going to play out? Only time will tell, but look, there's definitely been some good movers and some things that haven't done as well. Lots of volume there, and gas prices actually coming down, which is good. So, you know, hopefully over the weekend, gas prices will be uh, a little bit cheaper, and that's generally the time to try and do your smart contract sort of stuff, anything that's involving ETH and gas fees. All right, we can see a red day. Again, market's down 1.6%. We saw what it was like when the market was up 4.1%, I think, the other day and how high things went. So, yeah, kind of to be expected, you're going to have some red days eventually. But, I mean, look at Solana, 11% in 24 hours. That's quite nice. Uh, wouldn't be surprised, again, if this then pulls back a little bit. So, you know, you make 11% today and then maybe tomorrow you lose, you know, 6 7 8%. We'll have to wait and see. All right, in the last 24 hours, what's moved the most in the upwards direction? <laughs> what's pumped the hardest in the top 100, of course? Well, there we go, Solana's right up there, but Rune, Thorchain, there we go, big move by them, 26%, nice. And Solana again, 11.5%, uh, the graph uh, getting a nice pump, Nexo, Leo, VeChain making a nice move. Uh, lots of nice movers there and look two double digit movers which is always nice in 24 hours even chain link finally starting to making a move can it finally break out of this kind of 20 ish dollar uh, area that it's been in for a really really long time uh, look slowly but surely nothing wrong with that i'm happy with that when things when things pump really hard like this unfortunately they usually dump pretty hard now again i'm not going to say they're going to lose all of their gains but again i wouldn't be surprised if solana if not tomorrow the day after you know had a loss of about six seven eight percent something like that so it is just you know again people it's traders really getting in and making those kind of short pumps you know they're on the five minute charts 20 minute charts four hour charts and things like that and they're just trying to make those quick gains that's where you get a lot of that. I'm not saying none of it's from investors, but a lot more traders. Particularly if you lose a lot of this you know, in the next 24, 48 hours, that is definitely, it's more the traders than the investors doing things like that. All right, on the flip side of the coin, what hasn't performed so well in the last 24 hours in the top 100? Because the market is down. There you can go. Axie Infinity's come down. Telcoin, Zcash, Shiba Inu uh, has been selling off for a while. Litecoin, a bit of a sell-off, but look, Litecoin's almost up at around about sort of, well, I think it was there for a while, $200. So that's not bad for Litecoin, making a bit of a move. Stellar had a really big pump earlier in the week. Uh, Binance had a pump only a few days ago, again, from burning coins. So all these coins you're seeing at the moment with losses, they're generally coins that pumped in the last few days, except for Shiba Inu. That pumped a while ago, and it's generally just been coming down. But that's not to say Shiba Inu can't have uh, another big pump as this market you know, continues on. Particularly, again, if you are of the belief that we are in a bull market. There's probably some people that still think uh, we're not. I don't know who that would be. But there's definitely, there's always bears out there who say any minute now it's going to you know, fall over and go to zero. Well, so far it hasn't gone to zero, but you know. Never say never. Oil went minus $40, so anything's possible. I mean, I never thought I would see that in my entire life. Uh, something that is such a foundational kind of stock, uh, just product that the world uses, went minus 40 for a period there. That is, yeah, I'd love to look through back through history and see if that's ever happened before. Uh, again, some random you know thing I'm sure could probably go minus a hundred minus a thousand I don't know but something that is such a core fabric uh, to our way of life i.e oil uh, to go you know something like negative 40 that really was uh, 
something I never thought I would see. And look, most people, uh, if they're not into stock markets and things like that, would never pay attention to anything like that anyway. So it's not like it's the biggest news in the world unless you're an investor and things like that. And for me, that really was just a moment for me where I thought, you mean things can go below zero? Like, isn't zero it? <laughs> Is there actually a price where you have to pay someone to take something off your hands? And it seems like there is it didn't last too long i mean the price of oil's generally gone through the roof again now petrol is you know it'd have to be at near all-time highs i don't think i've seen petrol as expensive as it is here in australia at the moment so yeah it'd be interesting to see how it's going around the world but yeah imagine you were able to pick up uh, oil at minus 40 dollars and you know if by somehow you're able to hold on to that for now and it's probably trading at hundreds of dollars uh, now that would be a quite a nice move although the minus 40 that didn't last very long but still something to behold for anyone who's a trader or a chart analyst or into investing i don't know if you'll ever see something like that again in a lifetime but uh, i can say that i was around when that happened all right let's have a look at the bitcoin chart here we go and again we can see it was a big sort of move upwards and then we basically lost a lot of those gains so we got up to nearly sixty seven thousand dollars it was about sixty seven there wicked up to there and then we came straight back down to what are we sixty two thousand uh, dollars and we've pumped up ever so slightly and we're tra trading at nearly sixty uh, three thousand dollars again this is all you know big traders and things like that you know just trying to do all these kind of crazy moves again these big massive wicks and things like that it's not so much investors that do things like that i couldn't imagine there's a whole stack of investors who went uh yep sixty six thousand one hundred and twenty six dollars that's where i'm taking my profits don't get me wrong i'm sure some big uh investors probably have uh at some stage but whether that was the price i don't know i think there's more trading uh and uh, not so much manipulation but definitely trade moves going on and you know trying to shake people out of longs again that's probably why we had such that big sell-off everyone was getting a bit too bullish and probably uh, all the longs were destroyed there now in saying that here is something very interesting that happened on binance us bitcoin flash crashed on binance us only and it was caused by an algorithmic bug says the exchange the price of bitcoin went from above sixty thousand down to eight thousand two hundred dollars now we still don't know if anyone was lucky enough to pick up bitcoin uh, at those prices because what it says here i mean here's the chart for a start look at that just this big crazy wick all the way down now the issue with this is a lot of people have sell orders put in so this can negatively affect anyone who said all right you know i've got my bitcoin that's worth sixty four thousand today if it gets down to thirty two thousand i'm going to sell well it dropped down all the way down to eight thousand two hundred dollars i think was it i said eight thousand yeah eight thousand two hundred now what's even better is if there were people well not even better it's bad for us binance uh in all sorts of ways it's going to be bad for people who had sell orders because Bitcoin was never really worth, you know, $8,300 uh, in, in the last, you know, <laughs> since basically uh, March 2020. That's the last time it was really worth that kind of money. But people may have, you know, unfortunately had their Bitcoin sold on them because of this flash crash. But also there might have been people who had buy orders in super cheap that may have been filled. But at the moment it says here, uh, Binance US hasn't responded to say if any traders were negatively affected, let alone any were positively affected. Again, imagine you just put in random orders. All right, I think Bitcoin's going to get down to, you know, 14,000, 11,000, 21,000 and you're on Binance US you may have had your orders filled. We'll have to wait and see. They haven't come out and said anything. So this could be a really expensive bug for them because they'll probably have to, not have to, but yeah, they actually might have to, uh, refund the people who had their Bitcoin sold when it wasn't really that price and then have to try and claw back the money for anyone who you know had these crazy low buy orders. And again, maybe even down at $10,000, they may have been able to load up on some Bitcoin at that price. So uh, I'll keep my eyes peeled over the next few days to see where this eventuates because this could be uh, not great for Binance US. But again, look, great for some people, maybe not for others. And you know anyone in Binance US who maybe got to pick up some really cheap Bitcoin will probably be asked to return it and there'll be a little bit of a reward. Uh, and you know some people probably just won't want to knowing where Bitcoin is right now and where it could go. And there could be 
uh, some legal avenues that will be explored, I would think, uh, if that has happened. Right, moving on. So Associated Press are going to run a Chainlink node to guarantee the reliability of its data. So Chainlink keep getting you know, more and more partnerships and all sorts of things going on. They really are, I now consider Chainlink, it's, it's like Bitcoin. It's the only other coin I can say that is like Bitcoin. Ethereum's probably getting pretty close, but I think two, and again, this is not financial advice. It's never that. This is just my personal opinion. But if you're buying crypto, you should have Bitcoin and you should have Chainlink. Outside of that, you can buy you know, all sorts of random stuff, but they're two coins that I think just have real world value and they're going to be around for a very long time. Very hard for another Oracle play to come in and take uh, take over from Chainlink. They just, you know, everyone basically goes to Chainlink and, you know, Bitcoin is the granddaddy of them all. Uh, and that's why it kind of leads uh, the price, uh, well, leads the market in general. When Bitcoin's doing well, everything else does well. And when Bitcoin doesn't do well, everything else doesn't do well uh, either. But when Bitcoin travels sideways uh, and kind of consolidates for a while, well, that's when the altcoins really start to run. Uh, it says here the agency, so this is uh, AP, the agency will share data related to US race calls, economic facts, sports game outcomes, and business financials. The data will be cryptographically signed to verify its authenticity. So Chainlink, I mean, yeah. Again, for me, if there's, you know, outside of Bitcoin, if there's another coin that I am basically 100% sold on, as you know, sold as you can on crypto, considering how new it is, it's Bitcoin and Chainlink. After Chainlink is then where Ethereum would come in. And there's lots of other coins I really like and believe in, but I think Chainlink really has solidified itself as it's a mainstay. It's not going anywhere. All these other, you know, not all of them, because that wouldn't work for Chainlink. But, you know, 90% of these other cryptos could fail and Chainlink would still be around. Same as Bitcoin. You couldn't say that about uh, 90% of the other cryptos that, you know, if all these other ones failed, they would still be around. But Bitcoin and Chainlink, I'll put it right up there. Uh, and it is something I will continue to uh, dollar cost average into uh, over time. Uh, this really has kind of solidified a solidified it for me just you know you go and have a look at all the partnerships everyone who's using Chainlink uh, and the way it is performed ever since its inception you know and it came out in basically a bear market and still went up in value now it definitely still has peaks and troughs and it's been in a bit of a trough for a while but yeah loving Chainlink uh, and that will be part of my DCA uh, DCAing into Bitcoin DCAing into Chainlink and Ethereum all the other coins, uh, you know, I'm not as sold on. I still believe in them and I'm in, still invested in them. Uh, and if you watch my channel, you'll have seen the coins that I really like. But I really think Chainlink is now just a must. You, you, you know, if you're going to be invested in cryptocurrencies, number one should be Bitcoin and number two should be Chainlink. I actually put it above Ethereum. Ethereum will go back to number two once ETH 2.0 is rolled out and there's no hassles. Otherwise, Chainlink is going to be my number two. It's taken me a while to kind of realize that and this uh, article really did help solidify that for me. Uh, again, it's not to say that Chainlink will outperform other coins, but it's a mainstay. It's core to what crypto is about. It's bringing off-chain data on-chain. Uh, and that is something that Chainlink, you know, it, it really is leading the space. Again, it's like the Bitcoin uh, of any oracles. I think it'll be very hard for another oracle to come in and really uh, take on Chainlink. It's not to say that there aren't other oracles out there that, you know, can't do well in price, but Chainlink just has such a head start. And yeah, I couldn't imagine you would have a crypto portfolio and not have Chainlink in it. But you do you. Again, never financial advice, but Chainlink uh, is going to be a mainstay for me. I'm going to continue to invest in that. Because again, we got to remember, Chainlink isn't small in crypto terms, but crypto is small in greater general terms, in investing terms. So if Bitcoin can, you know, maybe go to a million dollars one day or five million, 10 million, or who knows where Chainlink's going to go to. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying Chainlink, one Chainlink could go to a million dollars. Absolutely not. 
but could one chain link maybe go to a couple of thousand dollars, tens of thousands of dollars? <sighs> well, again, I mean, if, you know, Bitcoin could get to a million, then, or, you know, five million or 10 million, then again, that's what I see the upside for Chainlink again because of all its partnerships and that it is fundamentally used by so many programs uh, out there. Anyway, I'm rambling a bit. Let's move on. Right, FTX have raised $420 million in a Series B1 uh, exchange funding round. They have now been valued at $25 billion. I mean, you know... The one that I missed, again, FTX and Solana. I've got some Solana. I've got no FTX. Uh, and the Solana has been doing quite well in the last couple of days. But, you know, FTX and Solana, they're really two of the ones that I'm really uh, upset that I missed. Avalanche has done pretty well. Uh, I'm not too worried about that. Uh, you know, I got onto uh, Terra Luna quite early. I just didn't buy much. I'm kicking myself that I didn't buy a whole lot more, but at least I bought some. But FTX and Solana, they're two that I've missed and I will uh, keep an eye on FTX uh, and look to buy in uh, at good prices, particularly whenever the next bear market is. Now, in saying that, we've got to hope that another bear market comes or at least that we can realise, you know, that this is maybe the new bear market. Like I said, maybe the last few months that we went through, that's the new bear market. And they're going to be really short and sort of sharp and short as in a couple of months. That's not really a long bear market. Uh, and they just, you know, continue upwards as of all the, you know, new money and new people getting into crypto. You know, I'm hoping that I'm going to have, you know, I'm going to be able to do it right and have plenty of cash on the side and buy in at the bottom of the next bear market and, you know, hopefully 10x the position that I am in now. But, you know, that's a whole lot easier said than done. Hence why I'll continue to do my DCA. But when I believe we're in a true bear market, my DCA will go down. And particularly when I think things are getting really frothy, uh, my DCA will be uh, a lot less keeping plenty of cash on the side. Last but not least, NFTs. I mean, they've just been going absolutely mental this year. And this was super interesting because I thought, who's buying all these NFTs for these absolutely crazy prices? 17% of addresses snapped up nearly 80% of all Ethereum NFTs since April. 80% of nearly all NFTs went into just 20 addresses. Now, don't get me wrong, there's still 80% of people out there who, you know, uh, aren't falling into that 17%, uh, 83% to be exact. But that tells you that, you know, a lot of NFTs that have been selling and for ridiculous prices have been snapped up by whales. That's who've been paying these crazy prices, you know, a million dollars and, you know, hundreds of thousands and all the rest of it. And I don't feel so bad now that I missed out on a lot of the NFT stuff. I've only bought... Uh, I've bought three NFTs, but all from one project, and that was the Crazy Skulls. And so far, so good. I really like the pro project, excuse me, and what they're doing, and there's been some price appreciation, which is good. But I'm not so sad that I missed out because I looked at them all, and I was like, the price of, this, of these things are just so ridiculous, and the gas fees, I just wouldn't have been able to keep doing it forever. And now I know that it was mainly whales that were able to you know, snap these things up, and whether they'll be able to get their return on their money in the future... We'll have to wait and see, but they were the ones that most likely snapped up, uh, again, 80%, and it'll be 80% of most of the good ones. There'll be plenty of shit ones that they didn't touch. But look, even some of the ones that they consider good may never live up to the prices that they actually paid, but we'll have to wait and see. All right, that's it from me. Obviously, we got the weekend coming up. Are we going to have a weekend pullback, or is this just you know up, up until you know, we get to a blow-off top? Uh, like I said, I expect the volatility to be more substantial uh, as we are now in all-time highs you know the volatility is usually less when things are a bit boring and not much is happening other than it may be going down but once things start to break into new all-time highs they can really rock it up very fast and then rock it down very fast so just please be careful and remember when you're investing in things in all-time highs it's a riskier time again breakout trades and we're still at you know, kind of that breakout mark. You know, the breakout mark was about 63, 64,000. We're only at 62, 63,000 now. So we're actually under it. We broke out and came back down. But that's actually the sign of something quite bullish if we bounce from here and continue to go up. You want to break out 
come back down and retest it. We did 62, 63, 64,000, a retest of it, come back down. And then if we start to break back up, that'll be super bullish. But there is still absolutely the possibility that maybe this was a double top. Uh, I'm not saying it is, I don't think it is, but it's just something that's in the back of my mind that it's possible, again, that there's all these, you know, whale games going on trying to shake people out. But I think it'd be pretty hard to dump the price from here. I think there'd just be too many buyers. There's, you know, again, with the futures and soon there'll be spot market stuff and there'll be plenty of big players who will just be like, I never thought Bitcoin would hit 60-something thousand. It dropped to 30,000. I knew it was dead and now it's back to 60,000 again. Right, this thing's going much higher from here. And it is just that simple uh, human psychology that will drag more buyers in. Because again, people would have been saying, there's no way, I don't believe it here. And down here, they would have been like, see, I told you, I knew I was right, it's going even lower. And then they're hearing about it back here going, say what? This is back there again? Damn it, I've been wrong, I'm getting in. And that's what will push the market higher. That is, yeah, human psychology. Even I would have that if I looked at something and didn't believe in it, and then it dumped by, you know, a large amount, I would have been patting myself on the back saying, I knew I was right, but then if I heard it was back to its old all-time highs again, that is the moment where I would have realised, hey, this thing's actually not crap. This is legit and it's probably going to go a whole lot higher. Not the greatest time to jump back in uh, when it's, uh, breaking new all-time highs but it still can be a good time because this could go a whole lot higher again if it's a breakout trade all right that's it for me stay safe be kind to one another hopefully you're all on that gain train there were a little bit of losses there but generally we all should be up and i'll see you next time